Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, so the, the presentation would be on diaspora investments and firm export performance in selective sub-Saharan African countries. So this is a joint paper with uh, three quarters, uh, two from the University of Bari and one from UNIDO. So the, the outline of the presentation is basically starting with uh, the research questions, basically spe specifying which type of questions we're trying to answer. The motivation, a summary of the contribution, a description of the data sets, uh, which is based on the Africa Investor Survey. Uh, this is a survey that uh, UNIDO has contacted, conducted in several countries. And uh, in fact, the project started when, with the colleague, we decided that we should exploit it uh, a bit more, the data set a bit more, to try to have some type of academic work done on the data sets. Uh, the reason is basically, usually this type of survey is not done with academia in mind, but more for technical cooperation. So at UNIDO, there are two big divisions. One is research and statistics, but the other is really based on technical cooperation. And those are the guys who have been collecting this, this data with other objectives in mind. But uh, we've decided to try to, to use it to do some academic work. So I'll present the results and the, then the concluding remarks. Uh, so what is the research question here? Basically, what we're trying to look at is to see whether diaspora firms are more likely to export than domestic firms. Uh, so this is not a panel data set, so it's basically cross-section uh, with all the implications. And the related question is whether uh, which are the firm level characteristics that, uh, that can explain this difference? Just to give a summary of the results, yes, we find that diaspora firms are more likely to export than domestic ones. And of course, we find that they are less likely to export than foreign firms. So what you have, in fact, is a, according, if you divide the, struct, the ownership of the firm between domestic, for diaspora, and foreign, you have a middle ground type of entrepreneurs uh, that can also come into the picture if a country wants to increase uh, its export. So I'll come back to, to that later. So what is the motivation for this paper? Uh, let me start by a definition of uh, diaspora for those who are not aware of it. Uh, I remember a colleague asking me what was a diaspora, and I was really surprised because for me it was straightforward. I know what a diaspora is, and I've grown up into this type of, of environment with, uh, just to say I'm from Burkina Faso, and many of us usually go to, into the neighboring countries or even outside. So we know what, what uh, diaspora means. But uh, so just to make things clear, the diasporas can be defined as groups of migrants origin residing and acting in those countries, but maintaining strong sentimental and material links with their countries of origin, their homelands. To make it specific, right now I'm living in Austria. I'm from Burkina Faso. So basically, I'm from the diaspora. So you have a group of people simply living outside, but they still have strong ties with their country of origin. So the number of African people residing abroad has been growing rapidly recently. And uh, conservative estimates put it at around 30 million in 2010. And a feature of that is most of this African diaspora is located on the continent. So they are not really going uh, in Europe or in in America, they are staying on the continent. The second aspect is they are contributing to their economies, mainly through remittances. And this has been estimated to 40 billion uh, in 2010. So four times what it, it was in, in the 90s. So it's a significant source of income for the continent. 
So this highlights the fact that the diaspora is growing in number. The second motivation for this paper can be that the diaspora is attracting attention, first from the governments, because you have many countries like Ethiopia, Ghana, Nigeria, or Uganda, who have set up some government agencies or going through embassies to try to tap into the potential of the diaspora. So in investing, in assisting local communities, or even sometimes in providing policy advice to the government. And this might be new maybe for African countries, but I remember reading about Malaysia, for example, who has a program. I think they are trying to move from the middle income category to the high income category. And one of the things they have put into place, a policy measure, is to attract the diaspora back into the country. So, and they think they, this might be an important addition uh, to their desire to achieve the high income level in the coming years. The second thing is that the diaspora is also attracting attention from international organizations. So you have, for example, the African Diaspora Program from the World Bank was launched in 27. So why is it that diaspora is attracting attention? You have several hypotheses regarding the pro-development effects of the diaspora. The first one, which is the one that is uh, most often mentioned, is that they contribute to financial flows to remittances to their own countries. So this is the aspect that is highlighted the most. Uh, okay, I'm not talking about the brain drain, which is the, the negative side. Here I'm just focusing on the pro-development effects. But you also know that there are issues with, uh, with diaspora because migration can cause some brain drain for some countries. Here I'm looking at the positive effects, as I said. The second one is that the diaspora, diaspora people can increase bilateral trade and investment flows between us and origin countries. And basically, they act as facilitators because, for example, uh, you are in a given country, you want to invest in another one, let's say Ghana. If there is a Ghanaian that can go with you, you might have less issues with information asymmetries. So this might be in one aspect. Or if you are a Ghanaian, and you want to import uh, some goods for your local community in, the, in your host country, you can easily do that because you have ties, you know people, you don't have, uh, you have a, a lower, lower obstacles compared to somebody who doesn't know the country. The third aspect is that the diaspora may ease domestic firms' access to technology and skills. And I think the most cited examples are from India, China, Taiwan, uh, but less so in the case of Africa. Uh, and finally, which is uh, the third aspect, which is the one uh, this paper is looking at, the fact that the diaspora people can act as entrepreneurs in their country of origins. And regarding that existing research uh, is not large, and the majority of current work is uh, theoretical. So what is the contribution of this paper? First, to summarize again, we're looking at the fact, we're trying to see whether diaspora firms differ from domestic and foreign firms in terms of export performance, and try to shed some light on explanatory factors. The contributions, uh, there are two contributions. The first one is simply that it looks at the impact of diaspora people as entrepreneurs in sub-Saharan Africa. So which is, I think one of the interests of the data set was that it was focused on sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, I'll give the list in a, in a short while. The second one is that it looks at the diaspora issue looking using firm level data, which is also a uh, distancing aspect compared to, to the existing papers. So as I said, uh, the data, the data is based on the UNIDO Africa Investor Survey, 
2010, from 19 sub-Saharan African countries, uh, you have the list here in West Africa and also Eastern Central Africa. I know that those colleagues are now working on collecting additional data in the same countries. And one of the aspects we insisted on was to, for them to establish a link with the previous survey so we have a panel structure in the data set. So I hope that will work out. Uh, I know that they have been working, for example, in Niger, in Uganda, and uh, also additional countries like Congo Brazzaville. So the questionnaire was designed to collect information from business owners on finance, investments, investor characteristics, perception. So in total, there were about 6,500 companies and around 700 derived variables. I think the, okay, one maybe of the criticism that you can address to the questionnaire is that it's really long. I think it's around 30 pages and with very detailed information that are asked. So uh, it's really quite something for firms to sit down and put the, the required information. Uh, but so you, you have, I think, around 200 variables, but then you can expand it to around 700 variables. Uh, so the question, do diaspora firms perform better than domestic ones in terms of export propensity and intensity? Uh, so the intensity is basically the export to sales ratio and propensity is the likelihood to export. How do we look at that? Uh, the first thing we did was to have, to test it not parametrically, uh, using uh, the same approach as Delgado et al. in 2002. So the basic idea is using stochastic dominance. So if you consider F, as the export intensity distribution of diaspora firms, J as the one of domestic firm. So you can talk about stochastic dominance of F relative to J if F minus J is inferior to zero for, for all Z in R with strict inequality for some. Uh, the way to look at it here is basically that the likelihood of getting a Z a big Z that is uh, inferior or equal to the small Z with F is smaller. So if you think of this Z as a price, the likelihood of, let's say, $100, the likelihood of getting $100, something that is less than $100 is smaller with F than with J. So you have greater chance of getting a greater price uh, with F than with J. And the way to test that is basically through two, two tests. Uh, the null hypothesis, hypothesis is that F minus J equals zero, and you have to reject it. And the one-sided test is that F minus J is inferior or equal to zero, and you shouldn't reject that. So you reject the fact that the distribution are the same. You don't reject the fact that F stochastically dominate J. Or is it G? So basically, if you perform that test, you find that indeed the null hypothesis is rejected in the first test and is not in the second one. So uh, the distribution of diaspora firms in terms of export intensity stochastically dominate the one of domestic firms. Okay. Then we move to the parametric approach, which is basically the standard one. Uh, so this was basically a type of robustness uh, a type of, of analysis. But for the second one, the diaspora firm is simply a dummy variable equals one for diaspora firm or zero else. Uh, just to be precise, in the questionnaire, in fact, there was a question asking the respondents whether 
uh, the investment uh, was coming from a diaspora member. So this is simply a yes, no question that we're using. So if the answer is yes, it was coming from the diaspora, then it's a diaspora firm. Okay. Then you also have a dummy variable for the foreign firm. You have a set of control variables. We also control for country and industry specific variables. Uh, so the industry specific variables are basically the ISIC two digit classification, uh, giving which in, the, in which industry uh, the firm is operating. So looking at the export status, the probate model, you find that the coefficient of the diaspora firm is basically positive. Uh, so positive and significantly. So here the bench, the control group is the domestic firm. And you also find that, of course, and, and this is an expected result, that uh, foreign firms are more likely to export than domestic firms. So you also have the, import, the significance of productivity, uh, the negative impact of those firms that are using domestic input, which might be interpreted as uh, meaning that if you source your inputs locally, you might have access to lower quality or lower variety uh, for your inputs. The other variable here which is significant is female employment. So I remember that we are discussing and uh, it's also in the paper. One argument is that uh, female empl employees are more reliable, more flexible, but the other thing might be that they are, more they are simply cheaper and uh, maybe lack with lower protection compared to their male counterparts. So basically the firms are simply taking advantage of them, trying to lower their production costs. Uh, but we don't have anything to discriminate between those two, two ways of, of looking at, at these results. So looking at export intensity, again, as the share of exports to, to total sales, you see, again, the impact of being a firm from the diaspora and also the impact of being a multinational. Uh, let me speed up. So why diaspora firms have a better export performance? Uh, yeah, I'm simply looking at two, two variables. One is the labor productivity, again, using the Golmogorov Smirnov test. We reject the null, the null hypothesis. We don't reject the second one. So there's a difference between diaspora firms and domestic firms in terms of productivity. And the information advantage. Uh, basically, when you look at uh, diaspora members that uh, declare that they are familiar with international trade agreement or regional trade agreement, you usually hire than, the, than those for the domestic firms. So uh, the diaspora members might be in a better position to take advantage of, of those international or regional agreements. Uh, to conclude, so again, our results suggest that diaspora firms have a higher probability of exporting and a higher share of exports in total sales than domestic firms. Uh, this is basically a summary of what I have been presenting. The presence of diaspora investors and entrepreneurs in the countries of origin economy can therefore contribute to the, positively to the export performance of the country. And basically, what we are trying to do here is simply to give to some support to the choice of several African countries or international organizations to devote growing attention on how to tap into the potential of the diaspora. So really the, one of the objectives we're trying to have with this paper is to have some policy contribution uh, regarding how uh, the government can take advantage of the diaspora in the, in the process of development. 
So thank you.